coming into this debate, there was a general consensus among several campaigns and some uh, consultants that Pete Buttigieg might find a target on his back, having risen in several of the early state polls to what appears to be a pretty consensus lead in Iowa. Well, certainly uh, this was another opportunity to reach out. That didn't wholly materialize. Some candidates took some subtle shots at him, but he seemed to survive. I think Mayor Pete's qualified, uh, but I don't think a woman who was a mayor of a small town, um, and that was their political experience, um, would be able to be on that debate stage. You had several candidates, I think, that came away able to say they had very successful nights. Uh, Kamala Harris, in particular, uh, has been kind of languishing in the polls and fallen off since the summer, clearly had a very good night uh, this evening in Atlanta. The question is whether that uh, materializes in the form of any kind of bump for her going forward. You hear different answers on whether this field needs to winnow. Everyone knows the winnowing is coming at some point. The stakes keep getting higher. The qualifications to get in these debates keeps getting higher. Uh, very few people expect 10 people to be around next month. Senator Harris, who had a very good night, really pressed this, started a, kind of a new angle on this idea of electability. Who's the best candidate to take on President Trump? And she kept bringing up the Obama coalition, the Obama coalition. And that's a, a, a quick way to talk about how you pull together a racially and demographically and geographically diverse coalition in November. Democratic voters have made clear that they prioritize finding a nominee who can defeat Trump. You're going to see, I think, more and more of these candidates explicitly going after uh, that, that idea and trying to prove their own case. My job is to focus on solving the problems that got Donald Trump elected in the first place. I expect him to still be there at the ballot box in 2020 for me to defeat. Chairman Perez stands by his decision and says, you know, I wanted to set these fundraising thresholds because, quite frankly, if the candidate can't meet them, and can't meet these polling thresholds at this stage, they're probably not going to be the nominee and couldn't beat Donald Trump anyway. I'm known for my selfies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Just had a scenario tonight where Booker is the highest profile candidate uh, who's at risk of not, not making that. Health care somehow comes up as a, a major debate. And there's, there's a question as to whether the, the, the divide between these Medicare for all single-payer single candidates and the public option candidates are really arguing over a difference that that many Democratic voters care about or whether it uh, puts them a lot closer together in the eyes of the electorate. We don't really know yet. It, it is striking that all of these candidates seem to agree when they are asked about climate that it is an existential threat to the economic and social order that, that we have in the United States and around the world. But it is an issue that simply doesn't rise to the forefront in these debates.